and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato tonight. Former Attorney General of the Federation, Muhammad Adoke, taken into custody by EFCC shortly after arriving in the country following his release by authorities in the United Arab Emirates. Federal government vows to prosecute 22 former governors and other public officials accused of corruption to a logical conclusion. President Buhari approves recomposition and inauguration of the NDDC board after completion of the forensic audit of the commission. And US President Donald Trump impeached after a vote in the House of Representatives described by the Senate Republican leader as a partisan rage. On business news tonight, NNPC raises January official selling prices for Bonnie Light and Kwa Ibo crude as minor export loading programs for next month emerge. On sports news tonight, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will end the year 2019 at number 31 in the world football ranking. And from Abuja, National Economic Council expresses satisfaction with the outcome of the closure of land borders by the federal government at its 100th meeting in Abuja. A former Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoke, has been detained by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission after he returned to the country from the United Arab Emirates today. Mr. Adoke, who was released from the custody of the police in Dubai, was picked up by Interpol at the Nnam Diazikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and later handed over to the EFCC. Mr. Adoke's lawyer, Mr. Michael Zekome, explained that the former AGF voluntarily returned to Nigeria and was not extradited. Four years after he left the country and a month after his arrest on the 11th of November 2019 in Dubai by Interpol, the former Minister of Justice and Attorney General, Mr. Mohamed Adoke, has returned to Nigeria. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had in 2017 filed charges against Mr. Adoke and others bordering on fraudulent allocation of the oil prospecting license 245 and other forms of offenses involving the sum of about $1.2 billion, forgery of bank documents, bribery and corruption. The alleged $1.2 billion scam involved the transfer of the OPL 245 purportedly from Malabo Oil and Gas Limited to Shell Nigeria Exploration Production Company Limited and Ajip Exploration Limited. While Mr. Adoke is charged for allegedly receiving the aggregate sum of $801.5 million as bribe to facilitate the sanctioning of the $1.2 billion deal brokered in 2011 between Nigeria and the oil firms, the international oil companies and their chief executive are accused by the EFCC of giving bribe to the former minister. Lawyer to Mr. Adoke, however, insists his client is innocent. Mohamed Belo Adoke, senior advocate of Nigeria, former attorney general and minister of justice, was being illegally held and detained in Dubai by the Interpol based on a warrant of arrest earlier issued in April by Dr. I mean by Justice DZ Senchi of the FCT High Court Abuja, but which the same judge vacated and nullified on the 25th of October 2019. Justice Anlami Senchi sitting at FCT High Court JB in the nation's capital had on April 17th, 2019 issued a bench warrant for the arrest of Mr. Adoke and other defendants in the case. The judge, however, vacated the arrest warrant on October 25th, following an application made by his counsel, Mr. Mike Ozekome, before the court to that effect. And still on the issue of corruption, a total of 1,636 cases have been won by the federal government between 2015 and September 2019. And that's according to the Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, who says the government is resolved to nip corruption in the bud and return all of Nigeria's stolen wealth. 
He also announced that over 22 ex-governors are either being investigated or standing trial already. Our fight against corruption is total, comprehensive, and dispassionate, devoid of any political or ethnic sentiments or inclination. One of the multiple institutions involved in the fight against corruption, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, was able to, from 2015 to September 2019, convict 1,636 persons involved in corruption-related offenses. It might interest you to note that former state governors and even serving senators are not spared. Currently, high-profile personalities, including judicial officers and former governors indicted for corruption, have been prosecuted and many sentenced to jail. We have three former governors convicted and serving various jail terms for corruption-related crimes while in office. Equally, 22 ex-governors are either under fraud or on trial. And from the war against graft to the spending plan, the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, has announced that capital releases for the 2019 budget hit 1.2 trillion naira as at December the 12th. She explained that the oil revenue for the year rose to 1.44 trillion naira, up by 10% above the third quarter of 2018. The minister was speaking at the breakdown of the 2020 budget in Abuja. Days after the president signed the 2020 budget, government officials, members of civil society organizations, and Nigerians from all walks of life are gathered here for the budget breakdown. Before highlighting details of the 2020 budget, the Minister of Finance speaks on how the 2019 budget fared in terms of implementation and revenue generation. Capital releases could only commence after the sign of 2019 budget, which was done on 27th of May 2019. As at 12th of November, we have been able to release 1.212 trillion naira in capital releases. 1.212 trillion naira in capital releases. Spending, spending on capital has continued to be prioritized in favor of critical ongoing infrastructure projects in the power, rail, rail, rail as well as the agricultural sectors. And then she explains the details of the 10.5 trillion naira budget. Key components of the budget includes a capital expenditure put at 2.4 trillion naira, Recurrent expenditure at 4.8 trillion naira, statutory transfers at 560 billion naira, debt servicing at 2.7 trillion naira, and a fiscal deficit of 2.2 trillion naira. Investing in critical infrastructure, in human capital development, and enabling institutions is key in job creation. Incentivizing private sector investments is essential to complement the federal government's development plans, policies, programs, and remain a key focus in the year 2020. A look into the budget shows that the Ministry of Works and Housing got the largest allocation with 315 billion naira. The Ministry of Power, 129 billion naira. Transportation got a share of 121 billion naira. Ministry of Education, 185 billion naira and 116 billion naira for the Ministry of Defense. Other details captured in the medium-term expenditure framework includes 61 billion naira for the Presidential Power Initiative, 1.2 trillion naira for federal funded projects in the oil and gas sector, and a 277 billion naira transfer of Tertiary Trust Education Fund. While expectations are high on how well the budget will impact the lives of Nigerians, officials have assured that with its renewed drive for revenue generation, government will ensure that the budget is fully implemented. Let's discuss the 2020 budget further now. And joining me live from Abuja is a development economist, Dr. Emeka Okengu. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. So, Thank you very much, Jama. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Do you think the return to the January 
December budget cycle is achievable now that we, we know we're seeing that the 2019 budget is still partially implemented? Will it, ro it will roll over, won't it? Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand what you mean by partial implementation. What, what you usually do is that when you get uh, to the end of a budget run, you roll over. Okay, and uh, let me answer your question very directly. Yes, it's, 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 it's going to start running. In fact, releases uh, from what the minister, uh, you know, in her speech today will soon start uh, happening if it's not happening already. So I think even from the last uh, uh, 2019 budget, from, you, could, you could also say that the budget did very well because, I mean, you had up to a trillion and above releases, you know, within the six-month period for capital projects. So I think that what's going to happen or what should happen or what must happen is that whatever is left in the capital is going to be rolled over. And all, please also recognize and remember that capital projects rarely run in you know, a 12 calendar circle. So 80% of the times so or most of the times you will need to roll them over, even when you do full implementation of uh, you know, releases. But how tidy do you think issues such as the outstanding debt servicing, capital expenditure, etc., and the appropriations um, what impact do you think that will have? These are these are generic matters. These are these are. All, remember that a budget is actually your financial plan that you've couched in figures. So what what should worry you? What you should focus on is actually now look at uh, what would fund what should support that budget. And in the case of the 2020 budget, I think for the first time we are having the privilege or having the luck of having you know external borrowing that is tied to specific projects. You know, there are monies now that can actually begin to now support, you know, your infrastructure against even, you know, what it is you have. And if we had that borrowing plan, you know, approved, the 22.7 billion, you know, that government is seeking a National Assembly's approval, if we have it passed, it simply means that your capital component can actually start running, you know, first day in January. So uh, it, what you talk about debt servicing, of course, there is no country, there is no system that runs without debt. You know, it is a responsibility. It's how you, you know, address your debt issues that makes or mars you. Okay, debt is not a bad thing. I mean, every, every known economy you have in the world is indebted from China to, to Indonesia to Japan to all. Now, what you must have is your debt so that you can become credit worthy. That's what credit worthiness is all about. So what I am saying is that uh, your strategy transfers are things you must be able to do, okay? Uh, your recurrent expenditure are things you must be able to do, but for the first time in a long time, you know, we're also now having a finance bill that spells out, that cuts a lot of chase, if you may, you know, out of what, uh, what, what, what you could call a, a revenue leakage point, uh, like the pe petroleum uh, profit tax, like uh, the stamp duties that has been reintroduced, you know, all these are supposed to be, you know, opening up a new revenue streams for you. Even with uh, the petroleum uh, uh, production service uh, contract, our agreements have also been signed. So I think it is for us to be positive about this and uh, make certain that, well, the minister has said from January we are going to start uh, releasing to uh, capital projects. And then let's see, if they were able to do more than 60% uh, or about 52% between May and November, when the, the last year's budget was done, I'm pretty certain that we might be able to get up to 80% or maybe a little, maybe 75 80 percent if we start in january so yeah, i'm very positive that everything that is rolled out can work if, if we handle it right okay and speaking of handling other things right you talked about debt servicing and how it isn't new but looking at the the fresh plans now of the executive do you think they're achievable within the the new framework of the budget calendar that they're trying to plan now the, the fresh plan, if you're talking about the debt, the borrowing plan, I think is the best we can be able to get because the, the monies we're getting are monies that I don't even think as a country will qualify to get, you know, at the rate we are getting them. And the lenders that are giving us this money are not your usual venture capitalists. They are actually your institutional lenders that have very strong implementation and monitoring, you know, frameworks on their policies. And these are all going into, you know, defined infrastructure, infrastructure that is known. You know, we're not going to get the money and then sit back to start planning. So, yes, of course, if it comes in, that's what I said to you earlier, it becomes that first run. I mean, we can actually kick off on our capital while we're even waiting for some revenue to be able to now support whatever that borrowing plan, you know, we start mm -hmm. with the one we're going to be generating locally in the country. All right. Development economist Dr. Emeka Okengo, thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you, Jama. Thank you very much.
And in part two, after the break, President Buhari promises adequate attention to the welfare of the police as he commissions the second regular cadet officers at the Nigeria Police Academy in Kano. That's in a moment. Do join us again.